Hey guys, my name is Jesse Mew, and welcome back to the Lone Wolf Challenge. In the last episode, one creature's near brush with death brought the rest of our tribe closer than ever before. And it also helped some of our creatures understand their roles in the tribe too. Little Lynn in particular, now she understands the true weight of her mother's mission. She knows what the curiosity of a healer truly means. She was even injured in the process as she tried to save Tanu from the carnivorous plant. But of course, she's not going to let that slow her down. She knows that Tanu needs plenty more healing than she does. So as she maybe picks up some of the weeds over here, we'll make sure that she makes her way to Tanu on the next turn when he has a little bit more energy to use those healing fruits. I have a feeling that Bander is going to be pretty torn up about it too. He traveled with Tanu for such a long time, these two have become some pretty good friends. So knowing that he nearly lost his best friend, all because of these deceitful plants, he is going to be tearing at these weeds for ages, trying his best to banish all the darkness around the healer's glade. He doesn't want anybody else to fall victim to Van Keer's traps. He must be starting to question his loyalty to Van Keer a little bit too. He came out here to find Van Keer's paradise, a place that had plenty of food for him to pick. But it seems like Van Keer has only given him trouble since. So I wonder what he thinks about these carnivorous plants, which are surely connected to Van Keer too? Maybe he thinks that these plants are only here to cause him pain, and he's cast himself away from Van Keer for good. Either way, it seems like there's no turning back for Bandersnatch. He's so close to the end of his lifespan now, with only five days remaining. How is he possibly going to run into Van Geer's paradise and put himself back into the good graces of the God of the Harvest? Maybe he needs a little bit of motherly guidance from Isra too. We are so lucky that she stumbled into these kids in the nick of time. Their mother actually just passed away, partially due to the sorrow of losing her own mate. But Isra scooped them right up she set Cyrena up in her old nest and helped soothe her to sleep, and now they're making themselves at home while they recover. So while she doesn't really have very much food to her name, in fact, I don't think there are too many berry bushes around here, just these toxic berries, which unfortunately nobody from this side of the family is able to eat. Ah, and our rogue male friend is down here too. Well, luckily, he's just about at the end of his lifespan as well. I think this was the very same one that Akio was trying to push out of the territory. So I wonder if these two are going to cross paths again. Honestly, I kind of figure that she must come from a rogue male family, and maybe that would explain her derps now, the deformed paw. Another thing that shows that she, too, is looked down upon by Van Geer. So while she might not have very many resources to spare, she would at least offer up the coconuts that are sitting on the shore. Though little does she know, these kids do have Van Geer's blessings. So they would be able to scoot on over to the coconuts and crack them open with ease. That's probably going to shock her. I wonder if maybe she spent all of her life trying to gnaw open these husks? and that would explain her appearance. All she can really do is chew on those shells until her teeth become crooked and gnarled. It's left her without food most days, but she's learned to make do. So in order to repay her, I guess these kids could give her the feast that she never had, assuming that they're brave enough to dip their paws into the water at least. But I believe we're out of turns now, so we should be ready to skip the day. And I did want to let you guys know I finally decided to take the leap and set this playthrough up on the tester branch too. So that means all the new features, the new bears, the new genes, they're going to be in the lone wolf challenge now. Since this island was generated in a previous version of the game, I'm not sure how many new things we're actually going to see during this leg of the challenge. But the main thing that I think is going to help us here is the name list. Now we can add our own custom names to the game's files. So all of the new babies that are born, and all of the new wanderers that we find too, will have the names that you guys have given me through the comments. So as always, if you would like to see a creature potentially named after you, or if you have a special name that you would like me to use, then feel free to leave those in the comments as well. And I'll add them to the big list of names, and hopefully we'll see them all popping up as new creatures spawn today. Our tribe is a pretty small one, so I would expect that plenty new wanderers are going to spawn in this darkness soon especially as the eldest are about to pass away too. But with that rogue male lurking so close, 
and with Sirena with all three of her gems. A newfound energy thanks to Isra's guidance. We're going to have to be very, very careful, Akio. I suppose you could leave the coconut collecting to your sister? That way you can sneak to the water's edge. Peer down at the rogue male who seems to be stuck in the tides? I wonder if he is actually stuck there. If he's not going to move, then I suppose we don't need to attack him, but we're going to keep a very close eye on him nonetheless. We probably don't even want Sirena to settle down right here. That's a little bit too close to the coconut tree for comfort, and I'm sure that's another thing that Isra has probably learned. In all her time living on these shores, you can bet that she's probably gotten herself hit on the head with a few coconuts too. So instead, I mean, I suppose we could have her just scoot on over here. Yeah, seems like he might actually be trapped there. Well, if that's the case, we can use this time to just pick up the grasses. Yeah, I guess that's fine then. No use wasting your extra energy on the rogue male, Akio. You can just carve the pathway for your next journey. I was going to say that maybe he could actually cut down this toxic berry bush. Something tells me Van Keer would be very, very unhappy with you. I know the normal berry bushes grow back, but the toxic berry bushes don't, so that would just be getting rid of one of his potential harvests. So instead, let's have you pick up the grass over here. Make it much easier for Isra in particular, because she is very, very hot right now. That's something that many of their family members have struggled with, probably even his own Beryna father. Though the friendly Baryina never did complain very much. He was just happy to get to know his kids. Now even little Lynn has her very last gem, and just in time for you to make sure that Tanu is getting proper healing. It looks like the heat has also gotten to him too, but you know how to soothe that problem now. So we'll have her instruct him to gobble up one of these healing plants, giving him all of his energy back once more. Then if he scoots over to this tile, she should be able to scoot in between him and his baby and gather up all of these stinky fruits. Now in the next turn, when his energy is full again, he can use his turns to lick off the stinky fruit juices, and hopefully that'll give him a little bit more energy to spare. Now Thor, on the other hand, our little noodle in the nest, something tells me he's not going to be quite as partial to the stinky fruits. Just like his mother, he's going to have a taste for danger, but I'm not sure if even these red fruits are going to cut it. With that scorpion tail of his, I would expect him to be much more partial to the poison berries. But of course, he's going to need to find them first. So while he can't get very far now with only one gem, we can have him toddle his way out of the nest, scoot right next to his father's side, and watch as Bandersnatch makes his way deeper into the darkness too. I'm a little bit worried to do so, because I know that danger could be lurking around any corner. And Bandersnatch doesn't exactly have the best sense of smell. He's short-sighted too, which must be so frustrating. He understands how it feels to be blinded by the darkness. And that's why all he wants to do is bring light to his family's home. Clearing out the grasses here will help them in more ways than one, because even if these carnivorous plants grow back in a bit of a hostile state, It'll be easier for us to worm our way around them. We won't have to settle down directly next to one just to get somewhere else. We should be ready to skip the day again, though. So let's go back to Bandersnatch, because I'm a little bit concerned that this carnivorous plant is going to grow back right here. Is that true? Oh, we unlocked a new gene, too, but I think that might be... Yeah, high fertility. For 100 days survived in the Lone Wolf Challenge. Well, I guess that would be good for you guys, because infertile genes have been quite the problem. But we have a bit of a bigger issue on our hands right now. Bandersnatch, is there any chance that you can smell this plant beside you? Oh, it's actually nice and green and friendly. That is very surprising. Well, maybe what you could do is crack this open. Probably has a little bit of revenge, to be honest. He doesn't have much interest in the food, but he's still angry with these plants for taking Tanu. So we'll have him continue on to keep banishing the darkness. But first, maybe we could scoot Thor over here. 
That should make it a little bit easier for him to smell into the darkness too, just to make sure that nothing is lurking around the corner. So far so good, Bander. Let's have you tiptoe over here, clear out a little bit more of this grass and the sniff around again. Oh, another friendly one. That is a sight for sore eyes indeed. It's almost as if Paisley is trying to lead you in that direction too, Thor. That was actually how Kenkelin's family found this glade in the first place, when our lone wolf guided them here with all of the healing plants in their path. So I guess it's only fitting. To honor the memory of the mother that you never got to know, let's have you go ahead and dip your nimble fingers into one of these carnivorous plants. Just to get a little taste for the red fruits, and just so you know that they are definitely not the food that you're looking for. You want something with a bit of a more unique taste. Now here's your chance to get one step closer to the purse now of your ancestors, Lynn. We'll have Tanu go ahead and lick off those stinky fruit juices, and then he can go ahead and grab a little bit more from too. Still tending to the wounded before she even thinks about tending to herself. She knows that her injuries aren't anywhere near as grave. I think we'll probably have her leave Thor's nest right here. While it's definitely not in use anymore, I don't think that Tanu's ready to pack it away just yet, especially with his mate's remains still inside it. Now, how do you think Vankir's followers would set the remains of their fallen to rest? Instead of digging up roots, just like how we had a different method for Takir, who used the rocks to paint their murals, I wonder if maybe we could actually use the berry bushes as a way to honor their memories too. Maybe if we did have a berry bush that would grow back every time, we could cut one down in their memory. Then when it grows back, you might have a little piece of them with it, as if their soul is still helping to keep their tribe sustained. But that will only work if we can find some normal berry bushes. So maybe that's what Isra would suggest? To help truly put the children's minds at ease, they'll go seek out the perfect berry bush to use. I guess they could probably just go back to the heart of the tribe. I mean, we have so many berry bushes out here, and they're probably all being devoured by bunnies at this point. So maybe that's where Akia was going to turn for. Instead of worming his way down the shore, we can just seek out those old familiar bushes instead. After all, we don't really know what's waiting for us out here, especially with so many different swampland tiles mixed in. That path might just be too dark to travel. That also means that Isra is going to have to leave behind the remains of her family. Now, even though they were a greedy bunch, even though that got them cursed by Vankir in the first place, they were still her family, so I'm sure she's going to feel a little bit of remorse. Maybe they could even set him to rest too, if they could find another berry bush to use. But you know, I think there was a berry bush around here, very close to this area, where little Sirena was actually born. I suppose we could use that one instead, if we could hunt it down. Well, Sirena, go ahead and grab one more coconut for the road, because I'm sure that Isra would really appreciate it. It might give her just enough energy to charge through the darkness, too. Unfailing that old nest. Oh my gosh, it's actually still here? Yes, and there's all those berries. Interesting that we're right in the middle of a drought at the moment, too. I wonder if that has something to do with this island's chaotic energy. So by cutting this berry bush down and marking it as his mother's grave, maybe she can fill it with some new life. But that should be the end of this turn. All we have left is you, little Lin. But I really want you to stay right here so we can still use those stinky fruit juices. Let's go ahead and skip the day once more. Now all we really have to do is watch the darkness. Make sure that nothing has crept up on our creatures. No new wanderers. No new bears. You know, seems like all we have out here are the bunnies. Interesting to see these little guys poking around, though. It's not as though we have too many berries out here. So I wonder if that means you should be following the bunnies, Thor. Maybe these little thieves will guide you in the right direction. What are the odds that they would actually hop towards some poison berry bushes, though? It's probably only going to be the normal berry bushes. So that would be a better job left to somebody who's looking for those treats. You're just trying to find your favorite poison. It seems as though the weeds may have grown back though. So if we set Bander up right here, hopefully he'll be able to clear the way for the baby. 
there you go, Thor. And honestly, you should probably be front and center anyways. You'll be able to smell much further into the darkness. Lighting up all of those healing fruits in the distance, too. So it looks like this is a pretty safe path for you to take. That being said, Bander is still very, very cautious, so we'll have him set up right next to you. He knows that he's on the end of his lifespan, too, but there's no way that he would let his friend's baby go it alone. He's not about to let history repeat itself in the jungle. I've got to admit, I can see these two growing very close, too. Maybe Lin isn't only healing his wounds, but he's healing his heart, too. So as we go ahead and grab some of those extra stinky fruits, and he licks off a few more of those juices. Oh, perfect. Unlocking the purse now, that is perfect timing, because now we can place that into their mutation menus too. Unfortunately, not Tanu's. Oh, then we probably won't see it after all. Well, Lin, at least we can place it into yours. The purse now of your ancestors. Oh, I hope we're going to see Jay's blessing here. Your mother would be so proud of you. And were it not for Tanu's help, the concept of this healer's curiosity may have been lost on you. You may not have been the grand healer that you are right now. So, I think it's clear that these two would be happy to start a new family together. To keep the bond strong and to keep the healers alive. I guess there's even the potential that we could see some double-clawed babies. And goodness knows we need some more protectors in the tribe too. Just in case we do run into anything dangerous out here. So if you wouldn't mind Kankalin, go ahead and breed with Tanu. And since this is the stinky fruit tree, we're allowed to place down one more nest over here, even though Thor isn't completely grown. Once he does grow up though, once he gains his third and final gem, then we can use that second nest to have another baby with you. So I think that's just about two more days before you can have your second baby. Now let's go back to you, Isra. We'll see if Akio can maybe swipe down this berry bush. But first, let's have him pick the rest of the berries clean. Oh, the bunnies want to get involved too. Sorry, little guy, but every last one of these berries is going to go straight to their mother. I think it's a pretty fitting offering for Fancare's followers. And now this little sapling will grow nice and strong in her memory. Now before Isra moves, let's make sure that Cyrena is making her way through the grass. We'll bring her straight through so she can sit down and honor her mother too. They should all be feeling much lighter after this. Lighter like the birds in the sky, perhaps? Did you just take notice of the bluebird, Isra? I wonder if maybe she's hoping that it might guide them in the right direction now. After they've set all of these remains to rest, they're going to have to figure out what they're going to do next. Let's bring her over this way, I suppose, giving the children a little bit more space. And if this pathway is safe, you might even use it to reach the other half of the tribe. At this point, I think it might be the easiest way to cut over to the healer's glade. And goodness knows I could use a few more eyes to light up this darkness. So let's go ahead and skip the day again. And this time we'll go straight over to Lynn to see what her little baby with Tanu is going to look like. Now I'm very curious to see what this name is going to be too, because this should be our first baby that is actually named by the game. Oh my gosh, and look at this little warrior. Double claws, so nobody is ever going to get themselves stuck in these carnivorous plants again. Not if you have anything to say about it. So we have Little Ghosting. What an adorable name for you, especially with that fur color. That is super, super fitting. Well, bravo, Niche. I approve 100%. Our little ghost is going to be haunting the jungles in no time. So his role in the tribe is going to be pure protection. He has no way to gather food, because our tribe doesn't pick up the meat that's left behind by bunnies. So I guess he would be a pretty good escort. In fact, if we had a creature with double nimble fingers, he would be the perfect partner for them to work with. Well, one thing's for sure, you are going to need to give him plenty of food to keep him strong. So, little Lin, go ahead and grab those stinky fruits. And I guess we don't even need Tanu to lick off the juices, do we? Your mission is done, so maybe his time would better be spent picking up other food sources. We could bring him to the red fruits. As scary as it must be for him to harvest these. If you grab these over here, then you should still be safe. 
but I think it would be worth it to let these things regrow. I mean, we could just leave one last red fruit inside here, then they would never respawn again. They would always be safe for us to work our way around. I guess we could probably do that for this one, just so the nursery itself will still be safe. But everything else we should really use for the extra food. So likewise, Bander, just so everybody knows that this one right here is safe, on your very last day, go ahead and crack this open for us, and we'll have you pick up the weeds around it too. Even after you've passed, I'm sure you're going to be watching over these pathways. He may be disillusioned by Vankir's harsh ways, but not you, Thor. So let's have you sniff into the darkness too. Ah, uh, there we go. There's some actual berry bushes, and it looks like one of them might even be a poison one too. So the carnivorous plants may have led you here, but the bunnies are going to finish the mission. So I guess it was kind of like a team effort in a way, both Paisley and Vankir working together. Well, I'm sure you're probably a little bit too eager to even clear out the path at this point. Let's have you just start straight over to that poison berry bush. Oh, two of them? Oh my goodness, two of them side by side? Is this actually Van Kier's paradise? Right next to the stinky fruit trees? Right next to one of the healing fruits, even? Gosh, it seems like Bander was right around the corner from paradise all along. If only he knew. He came so close to making Van Kier happy. But I guess in a way it still works out for him. Because if he is truly trapped here on this island, keeping this pathway safe for all of his tribe mates, he'll make sure that they can get to the food without fear, like some ghostly sort of guard dog. So that's one berry bush done. We'll have Sirena go ahead and pick up the grass around it. That way they can come back to see their mother someday. And as the bluebird continues to swoop overhead, turning directions right in alignment with the path that they're making right now, I'm sure that Isra knows this is the right step to take. So we'll have her go ahead and clear out the weeds, that way Akio can jump ahead of her and sniff around a little bit, make sure nothing is lurking inside. So far, so good. But I don't see any berry bushes up here either, so that's a little bit worrying. I was hoping that maybe they could find a place to set her family's remains to rest. Oh no, that's another poison berry bush. Well, that won't do at all, but we can still have you come over here to inspect it, I guess. I mean, there must be some reason that the bluebird is trying to push you in this direction. So sniff around again for us. Oh, there we go. It looks like there was actually a normal berry bush right next to it all along. Yeah, that's the one that they'll use for her family. I guess as a way to surprise her. She probably never figured that they would do her the honor. It's not something she can do herself after all. She's pretty lucky that these kids have such strong Beryna claws, or else they might not be able to perform that ritual either. But one more time, I suppose we can go ahead and skip the day, as the bunnies watch on from a distance. Were they looking directly at you, ghosting? That's awfully suspicious. Do you think maybe they want you to follow them? They must know that they're safe with you, because we have no use for bunny meat so they have little to fear. The only time our tribe is ever going to take a swipe is if they get a little bit too greedy, if they steal too many of our precious berries in the process. But I suppose that's not going to be a problem for you, Thorn, because they're going to steer very clear from your poison berries. So before we go ahead and end the episode, I do want to make sure that nothing dangerous is out here, of course. Everything is still quiet as can be and then we'll bring you over to Fiancure's Paradise. Have you make your way a little bit closer? Sneak over to that very first poison berry bush? Oh, this is it. You have found your perfect home. Now, if only you had somebody who you could share it with, too. I hope that we'll find some more wanderers sneaking around this place soon, because we'll need to introduce some new blood if we want to keep our tribe healthy. But we know that the Guardian of the Jungle Paths is going to keep watch over this place always, so you have plenty of time to figure all of that out. Now in the next episode, I'm hoping that we can finally reunite these two parts of the tribe, including Isra too, if she can manage to last at least. Yeah, let's have Keo tiptoe his way over here, grab some of those extra berries, and then chop this berry bush down. That way they can set her family's remains to rest too. Ooh, and you found yourself a stump? 
Ooh, Sirena. Maybe this is actually your calling. She does have Siren in her name. So I wonder if maybe we'll find that she's particularly good at attracting other creatures. With those songs, of course. She even has the ears for it, too. She would be able to pick out a pretty good song if she heard one. So maybe there's some hope for some new blood after all. I guess that would be a good way for the rest of our tribe to notice them as well. If they heard all of those songs drifting in the distance. Or if they saw the bluebirds circling nearby, too. The bane of any new mother. But in this case, it might actually provide them with some new friends. So for now, thank you all so much for watching, and I'll see you all next time. Bye guys!